Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a snooze fest in the market today because why everything happened overnight. We just talked about a chart yesterday, and I'm gonna, for those who missed it, go over it a little bit today and show you exactly what happened during the Asian and London session, which is why I basically you didn't see anything going on today. To be honest with you, I'll show you that, and it's important to understand what is happening on that chart, okay? And we did get some data out, which we'll go into Tesla, big day today. I'm going to show you what they're looking at on that one. We'll talk about snow, which I wasn't going to, but they had something happen in after hours as well as some other stocks you guys were asking me about. But looking at the data we got out this morning, and the market really didn't react to it that much at all. It was S&P Global Flash, US PMI. I'll tell you what that is in just a second. But as you can see, obviously manufacturing still in contraction. Services not in contraction. Again, a 70% of our economy. That's what's important to understand about that. And when you look at manufacturing, it's basically just been stuck in a range. Actually, actually going back to 2022. Let me redo that box. Going all the way back to 2022. Just a mess right here. And so no surprise on that one right there. And the market really didn't react. But here's the deal. Very important to understand this. So this comes from you know economists at the S&P Global Market Intelligence area here. And when you look, the survey indicators for September point to an economy that continues to grow at a solid pace, even though it has a weak manufacturing sector, which we have talked about forever, it seems like. And understand a reacceleration of inflation is meanwhile also signaled, suggesting the Fed cannot totally shift its focus away from inflation. Again, you're looking at around 2.2 GDP growth for third quarter, what this is kind of pointing to. You've seen upwards of 3% revisions for GDP. So that's very important to understand right there. And then lastly, the survey's price gauges, meanwhile, serve as a warning that despite the PMI indicators, a further deterioration of the hiring trend in September, the FOMC may need to move cautiously in implementing further rate cuts. Prices change for goods and services are both rising at the fastest rates for six months with input costs in the services sector, a major component of which is wages and salaries rising at the fastest rate for a year. And so that is important to understand. We'll see what they're going to do on this one. This is where they do have to be careful. Now, when you look at this right here, this is the spy after hours movement, right? All the positive stuff seems to happen in after hours. Again, during the day, you don't really get as much. But more importantly, what we're looking at when we look at this kind of stuff is what's going on in the futures market. I always tell you, I'm looking at what's going on in after hours and stuff. And you can plainly see this trend line still stays in effect. This trend line has been in there since September 11th where it continues to bounce, right? We put some arrows on this. You can see right here, we're going to end up with one, two, three, four, and five, and six. Okay, so we continue to come down there and bounce right there. But when we look over here at what actually happened last night when Asia opened up Sunday at six o'clock and then uh, Europe came online, you see two totally different things happening in the market and stuff. And so when we pull up the shorter term time frames, you can see at six o'clock right here, ended up going up around 0.85% in a matter of about six hours. But then of course, midnight hits. And then something news, I don't know what the news was, honestly, it dropped about a percent, but you can see right around, it seems like around 2.33 o'clock where you really got this huge fast move down. This is when you normally get you're getting data out of Asia and Europe and things like that. And it may have just sucked. So it just dropped like crazy, but it hit that trend line. And then of course we get the bounce back up, which that's hitting at like 3.30 in the morning. So most of us are sleeping unless you're on West Coast time. Maybe you're still awake and everything. And then you get the move back up before we open up the opening bell right here. And then you can see what happened after that. After that, all we did was stay in a very tight range for almost... Well, it looks to be 10 hours, if I'm not mistaken here, but and it's about roughly a half a percent range that we stayed in. And so, I mean, to me, that was just untradeable looking at this right here, unless you're a master scalper. But yeah, you can see that that's that's 10 hours staying in 0.54 percent on NQ. Okay, after I just showed you the moves it made in you know very short amount of time there, and so moves were made overnight. This is what they're doing, kind of consolidating us. Some people are going to call it accumulation. Uh, some people are going to sit there and say, well, no, it's going to end up being distribution. And so we're going to find out. Let's see. Okay, that's what we're going to look at. And I talked about this yesterday about being jammed between these two shaded areas, right? One that's too hard to get through, one that was resistance. Now it's turned in support, maybe. 
And so that's what we got to see. If it breaks through the top one, absolutely. It's definitely going higher because it's been hard to get through that area. But obviously, you got to watch the bottom one as well to see if that's going to be true support or not. See what happens if that trend line breaks we talked about that's had those six touches. Now, looking at the S&P here, might surprise you, but the number of S&P 500 stocks outperforming the index have reached a level we hadn't seen since the dot-com bubble. Okay, so that probably surprised a lot of people, but there's been so much expansion. You've seen the RSP, right, hitting all-time new highs and actually outperforming the S&P over the last three months. So kind of keep that in mind. So that shouldn't surprise too many people because we've been talking about it for a while. But you can see Tesla here, big day, right? Again, some people are still saying it's in this rising wedge. I personally don't think it's still in the rising wedge. I think it's more in a channel at this point in time. And so when we kind of pull out on that one, just put the channel up here. You can see if we go to the top of that channel, even just to get there, you're going to be looking anywhere from 258, 262, somewhere there, depending on when it would hit it. Sorry, filled that gap to the left, as we just pointed out. And the question is, they're just going to keep running this up into RoboTax today, right? And if they actually hang the moon on RoboTax today, that's considered hundreds of billions of dollars that will come forth to Tesla, okay? We know normally any event for any company like this, whether it's Apple, Tesla, anybody, is normally a sell the news event. So it really depends on how much they're gonna run it up, how much they're gonna price it in, okay? And then once we hit the top, we're gonna know very quickly if we're coming back down or breaking out of that channel, all right? Now, MU, we talked about yesterday, and by the way, let me know what you think about the RoboTax event coming up in October. We think it's gonna sell the news event or not. Now, MU, we talked about yesterday, is trying to break out. It closed right on top of this channel right here. And I told you yesterday I didn't do it, so I'll do it today. If I end up pulling a fib on this, remember they report, they report earnings on Wednesday, okay? So they'll lead the way on semiconductors. It is definitely in a discount, okay? So I'm pulling mine right there, and you can see that it's bounced twice now off that golden pocket area, 0.618 to 0.658. So, you know, we'll see if this is going to continue to break out before earnings. Again, if, it, if the market likes what they hear, this is going to go quite a bit higher because it's going to be in a volume gap, which we talked about yesterday's video. I'll put it in if you hadn't seen it. Now, Amazon, we already talked about this. This has happened. We set up and go to 194 pretty quickly because it was in a volume gap, and that's all-time highs right there at 200. The question is, does Jeff Bezos have billions of more shares ready to be sold at 200? Remember, that's what put the top in for Amazon. Was he sold, I think it was a $6 billion, if I'm not mistaken, or something, right there at the top, and, so he, and he's been unloading way more than that. So, you know, we'll see. I say there's a joke and kind of not as a joke because we're only 3% away from it. And so kind of keep that in mind. Should have support at the bottom. And again, you look over here at, this is shop right here. Shop is, you can see here, right? The 200 week moving average, right? We talked about 200 weekly. If it gets through there, this can move higher. It closed above it today. We're going to see if it continues above it tomorrow. And so if it does, you know, that's a big area right there to get filled. It's a big gap. Okay, and so one thing this is doing, it's following Amazon. These used to be tied together. They're tied together once again. As Amazon is going up, Shopify is going up. Shopify goes up at a much larger percentage, obviously. It's a much high flyer type of stock. And so if Amazon continues to go to 200, Shopify is probably going to follow them and end up filling that gap right there. And you can see why, because right there is going to go right into a volume gap to fill the gap to the left. And you can see another reason was because it's been crushed. All right. Now, Google right here, you can see we talked about this one, too. And the same thing happened. Learn what a volume profile is. It'll help you out. It, it was going to fill around between 163, 164. Because it was in a volume gap, it got there quickly. It actually gapped up. All right. Once it's hit it, what else does it hit? The 50 moving average as well. So we hit resistance. We hit the 50 moving average. So if this starts to come down, it can go right back through a volume gap just as fast because there's a gap left there. So you can see that gap and left get filled before it starts to move higher, if that is the case, okay? So that's what the, the market's been doing. It's been going into these MAG7 that has been beat down, lagging the others, and pushing them up, right? And so that's continued to happen. So watch this for Google. Watch that on Amazon. Obviously, Shop is not a MAG7, but it's following Amazon right now. So watch those. Something else to watch here is going to be Palantir because why? Obviously, it's, it's up here. It's not in no man's land. It's where it's been when we IPO'd right here. But it's had this crazy move up. I think it's, what, 76% in 49 days? Because why? It got included in the S&P, right? Well, today was supposed to be the day it was included. We know we get run-ups once they're included. And so now we get to see where it goes from here. Okay, this had a lot of green days in a row, and it's had a 
big move up. So let's watch what happens from here over the next week or two, okay? Let me know what you think in the comments. Wasn't going to talk about snow, but I will talk about snow because, again, this shaded area is extremely important. If it loses that, it's going to go down even more. And so, of course, when we pull up, we'll, we'll go extended trading hours, and you'll see what happened. This big candle happened, and again, what happened? Well, you can see they're buying it up pretty quick, right? Pushing it right back into that shaded area. You cannot, you got to let the show go on, cannot let it close. Well, that shaded area, well, what happened was, there you go. They're going to be raising some money here, right? So they announced a private placement, over $2 billion in convertible senior notes. Market didn't like that. You can read the details for yourself. But if it ends up closing below that shaded area, you could absolutely get more selling happening. So be careful on that one. There's a reason why I believe Warren Buffett closed out his entire position on this one. And so, again... Some of you guys asked about Chinese stocks, so I'll go over it. Obviously, Bob's been doing well, but you got a couple that have not broke out yet. You got Baidu right here, and that shaded area goes way back on this one. Okay, It has been a saving grace for this stock. It goes back to 2010 right there. You can see multiple times where this is absolutely bounced from there. And, and so now we're in that area again. Right? It keeps hanging on. You got that trend line, descending trend line coming down. And you see how I don't want to break that shaded area? That's twice came down. It's kind of like the double bottom there. So when you look at this, if it breaks above that shaded area, especially above this level right here, this level right here would give it a market structure shift to the upside, okay, which is bullish. And so, but if it breaks above that trend line, which is only 4% away, then you'll have a breakout just like you had in Baba and a few other names, right? And another one that looks just like it, they're at almost identical charts, is JD.com. You can see the, these stocks have been just absolutely nuked, absolutely nuked. And, you know, I don't know how much money is rolling into these because I don't pay much, too much attention to them, but I have to because of this channel and stuff. You can see, look at that shaded area. How many times it saved this one? This one came public in 2014. So big shade area. They don't want to break that. Okay, that would be terrible, 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 terrible. So if this one breaks that trend line, you can see a big move up in this one as well. And again, I don't know. I, I need to do more research. See, like, it, is they trying to front run the Chinese economy? Because remember, They'll start buying these stocks up before the Chinese economy think if it's going to start bottoming out or something, even though it's a hot mess over there. I keep saying that. I don't know how you fix their problem. It's a little different, but money don't care about that, right? And these are ADRs, okay? So a little different. But when you look at this one, you can see it's going to do what? If it gets in this gap right here, like $31, actually like $29.80, then it can fly up to around $34, $35 very quickly, okay? If it gets above that, area and gets about 39.58 then you can see a real move coming here okay so just fy on those uh, those are risky you know so make sure you do your own research on that now you're looking at earnings AutoZone, kb homes tomorrow gonna be important to listen to and then we're going to end up with cb consumer confidence tomorrow and richmond fed manufacturing uh, data coming out and so let me know what you think is going to happen tomorrow hopefully it's a more exciting day than today was and so please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out really appreciate it thank you about signing up for the membership less than mcdonald's combo you can see what all you get right there and so appreciate all you guys support appreciate all you guys who watch the video share the videos put comments in there i read them all i really do appreciate it and i'll end up seeing you guys tomorrow so have a great night